Hello, welcome to the Studio Utani Podcast. I'm Matt Jarjosa. I'm joined today by Justin Macy, and today we are doing a commentary on Alien 3. We are watching the assembly cut. Uh, we cannot show the movie, but feel free to sync up this commentary with your own copy of the film, or just listen to us if you want to. But you can sync it up by pressing play now. Here's the Fox logo. Hello, I'm Matt Jarjosa. I'm Justin Macy. Uh, we we've got some stuff to talk about with this uh, with this film. Um, this uh this is uh, probably in my mind the, the first not good Alien movie. <laughs> I uh, uh, it's got a, it's definitely got a following. Uh, and there's some good stuff we're gonna talk about, but uh, this movie's kind of a mess. Uh, yeah, this is the fifth Alien movie that I've seen. I've seen the uh, two prequels by Ridley Scott, and I've seen uh, Alien and Aliens, and I agree with Matt. This has got to be, this is the worst <laughs> Alien movie I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah it, it's uh, Alien Cubed. <laughs> it, it's honestly, uh, I, I mean, the the production of this movie is is well known. Uh, it's it's production hell. Uh, we it's covered very well in the. Uh, wreckage and rage documentary so i don't need to cover any of that but um it, it it's there's some messy stuff see there's the egg that we were talking about oh okay yeah, yeah these uh these opening credits kind of try to well it's exposition obviously but it's kind of weird exposition because it's like how to connect it to the previous movie a little bit yeah, and uh, it's I I like the way it looks the the little flashes of mm -hmm. one thing happening one thing happening, but it's really hard to understand yeah, because of that. It's one of the big mysteries in terms of the lore. It's like how the hell did the alien get an egg on on the Sulaco? And we kind of get a hint later on from Lance Henriksen, but it, it's honestly just really confusing. Uh, they actually tried to explain it in the uh, DLC for Aliens Colonial Marines, but uh, it's largely just been disregarded. Um, you can't hear it right now because we're watching this without the sound, but uh, I do actually like the score by Elliot Goldenthal uh, in this quite a bit. Um, I was actually trying to, a funny story, I was actually trying to look up the opening track one time and if you notice, the Fox logo actually went on a little bit longer than it usually does, and I was I was kind of pissed off for a second because I'm like, who the hell incorporates the Fox logo into the score? And then I realized, oh, he's he's playing the end of it into. I actually, I really liked that. Yeah, one. I yeah, I did too. It, yeah. I was just pissed initially because for some reason I was in a hurry and I'm like. Why did you put the Fox logo into this? I don't know. That's just an anecdote. It, nobody cares. <laughs> Sigour, the, so the co-producer Sigourney Weaver, so this is partially her her fault, I guess. <laughs> um, she did not want to... Um, I, I, I think she said in an interview she, was, uh, she heard Fox was kind of considering Alien versus Predator. And she was like, well, fuck that. I want this story to end, so you have to kill me. And I don't know, fair enough. I think it's it's fine as a story about Ripley's end. It's just maybe not a very good story. Mm -hmm. um, David Fincher, the man of the hour. Yeah, this is his first feature film. Yeah, how do you feel, like, do you see any, like, Fincher in this at all like based upon where he goes as a director it seems very controlled yeah and that's a hallmark of his sort of style you see for me i i i don't really in the whole production i really don't see that i okay. I, I see a really chaotic movie um with no clear direction and uh, a little bit of um a little bit of been glimpses of Fincher, but for the most part, this doesn't really feel like a David Fincher movie to me. No, but I, I think there are parts. Yeah, and we'll talk about me. that. Yeah. Is, did the movie just turn grayscale for a second? Looks like it. Why not? 
And I, sure. So this is part of the assembly cut that you didn't see. Um, uh. so, so yeah, Justin watched the theatrical cut of this, and there I are tried some... watching the assembly cut and fell asleep pretty quick. <laughs> it, it's it, you had an interesting uh, perspective about the theatrical cut versus the assembly cut. Um, yeah, I think we'll get into that later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I. I I, I do like this uh, these little extended moments because the theatrical cut does sort of just jump right into things. And in some ways, the theatrical cut kind of feels more like a you know a more traditional Hollywood structure. Um, but I do like kind of lingering on these extra details. It looks like a shot straight mm -hmm. out of like the Seventh Seal or something. Yeah, it's kind of pretty. Pro probably is a shot out of the Seventh Seal. <laughs> You think so? That wasn't a Fox movie, was it? No, no. It, was, it was made in Sweden. Svensk film industry. Oh, okay. Right. So, um, so yeah, it's a little bit of a different um, intro here. Wow, it, it is a different intro. Yeah, really. It is covered in lice. Is, is, no, is she is she doing fucking blackface? <laughs> I'm just saying, if this was made in... Is Sigourney Weaver going to get canceled over this? Probably not, uh, but if if, uh, if this was made in, um, you know, after 2010, this I, I don't know if that would fly. <laughs> I, I mean, what is that supposed to be anyway? It's sand or, or mud, right? Yeah, or ash from the uh, atmosphere. Yeah, wait, how did it... Wait, wait, she's cleaned up all of a sudden? I don't know. A little bit. Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, uh, all them uh, maggots? Uh, I think it's supposed to be lice. Oh. Yeah. Which is worse, I don't know. There's a lot of shots in this movie that are just kind of gross, and not for any particular reason. Um, like, if you look at something like Aliens, there's, like, one, there's some horrifying scenes in Aliens, like, specifically the moment when we see the chestburster come out of the girl in the hive, but it's a very deliberate, controlled moment that happens at a certain point in the story, and then there's a lot of stuff in this that just feels gross for no reason. And this mm -hmm. looks like a shot that was supposed to have a different background, and they just forgot to, uh, forgot to, uh, do the chroma key. Oh, yeah. I, that's not what it's supposed okay. to be. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what it looks like. Um, so yeah, this is actually a bit of an extended opening. Yeah, it's uh, a lot. It's a lot different. The, the, the theatrical cut theatrical just jump. Probably this was. Yeah, yeah. This Wait, might we have... got two. We got two different scenes of Sigourney Weaver being laid on a table. This scene was in the theatrical. Yeah, cut. this was in the, the theatrical. Other one was not. Yeah, I actually think it's unnecessary to have two of those, personally. Right. Um, yeah, so I'll explain my take on the theatrical cut <laughs> versus the uh, regular cut before I forget, or the assembly cut before I forget. Um, I liked the theatrical cut a lot more than what I saw of the assembly cut, simply because it moved a little quicker and it was over a little sooner. <laughs> Yes, uh, and, not, and I can understand that, to be perfectly honest, because it's like this adds in a lot of the extra footage that we didn't see, but it's not, it's a called the assembly cut for a reason, because it's just assembled, but there's no, or there's no rhythm to a lot of it, you know, it's almost just an approximate, I, I, I probably should know how to pronounce the name of the guy that put it together, Charles D. Lorizia. I'm going to get chewed out for pronouncing that incorrectly, but uh, it was him basically trying to approximate what he thought David Fincher might be trying to do, or, mm -hmm. or at least trying to show more of what they were, everyone was trying to do. Yeah, but, yeah there's no ox in the uh, yeah. theatrical cut. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah, very different. It's a completely different planet. Yeah, it feels like a completely different planet. Right. Um, but yeah, by this point, we were well into the story uh, in the theatrical cut. We were well into, like, okay, Ripley's trying to figure out where we are. And I I, I do agree. Uh, I think the pacing's a little bit better in the theatrical cut, but there are some details here. Well, 
Alien had slow pacing. Yes. You know? But the difference there was... It was... It had a lot of character. Yeah. In it. Well, it, it was... It was deliberately slow. Yeah. And it was... It was trying to create a mood. And with this movie, it's not entirely clear. I, I mean... If I had to describe Alien 3 as anything, I would say it's it's overly depressing. Yeah. Um, but I... And whose decision was that? Was that a Fincher decision? Or is it just kind of how everybody was feeling being channeled in the movie? I don't know. Now, the reason I would call this controlled, though, is because Fincher knows how to cut a scene together better than most people. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Each individual scene, from what I saw of the theatrical cut and what I've seen of this so far, yeah, is very well structured visually. Yeah, you know. No, I I, I could see that. Um. So this is we're getting a lot of stuff in this scene here. This is actually a mix of like three different proposed screenplays for Alien Three. So we're getting a little bit of the Vincent Ward monk thing going on, and then we're. Get it, we, we just saw the barcode on the back of the guy's head, which is from the William Gibson script, and uh, of course now we're they're they're prisoners in a colony, and it's not, it's a mix of elements that could blend together, but they really feel like they were taken from different stories, and it just feels like it's not clear what the movie's trying to get at. Yeah, it's fine to have three different screenplays together, but you have to take the time to smooth it out and make it into a yeah. cohesive whole, and they didn't have time. No, no, it just feels like they just smashed the uh, Vincent Ward script into whatever they were trying to make out of it. Um, it is famous uh, that this... The, the, uh, before I say that, this is one of the shots that, to me, feel for some reason, it felt like a David Fincher shot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's that kind of... Um. Uh. What do you? What would you call it? I. I guess you, you said kind of best. framing. Yeah. The the controlled. You know, nature of things. Uh, there was a word I was gonna say. I just just lost it. But anyway, um, pretty famously, this movie went into production without a completed script. They greenlit the monk script by Vincent Ward and. Uh, and then abandoned it, and then they tried to gerrymander it into something else. Now, does this scene remind you of Blade Runner at all? Uh, I think in the way it's shot. It's what's... Uh, in what way do you, would you say it's Blade Runner-esque? Uh, just the angles and the the close-ups like that. It, it, I feel like... I, feel, I don't know, just the, the, whole, the framing of everybody from kind of... I can see it. A slight I, lower I, angle I, there. I, I do not... This is just a... Thing with me, I do not like needles. Oh in, yeah, in any so film. You're, you're, you're remembering that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. I I am not watching the screen right now. It's just a. That's just my one thing. I can deal with an alien, you know, a bursting out of somebody's chest. I can deal with people's faces being ripped off. I just don't like needles. It Remember just, to get your vaccine, everybody. Listening. Yes. If you have not gotten your coronavirus vaccine, please do. I got my coronavirus vaccine, both doses, and if I can do it, so can you. This message brought to you by me. Um, so, yeah, so we're getting a little bit of the, the uh, introduction to um, the relationship between uh, Ripley and uh, Tywin Lannister. And it's uh, a weird relationship that doesn't go anywhere and then he just inexplicably gets murdered midway through the movie so it feels like a wasted storyline kind of like uh hicks and newt dying which uh justin it, what are your thoughts about hicks and newt being killed it was stupid i mean you had a good setup for the next movie when when a movie ends in a satisfying way, with a good setup, you're really betraying the audience by not following that setup. I, I think that's honestly part of the reason why, like, Alien 3, like I said, kind of has a following. There's people who like this movie, but I think it took a while to get that following because the moment that you betray the audience's expectations like that, you, you're setting a bad taste in their mouth 
right from the beginning, and they're not going to be as receptive to anything else that you've done. And they could have made the same movie with Newt and... You could, they could have made a similar movie mm-hmm. with Newt and um, You could have. Hicks. I don't... You know, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been the same. No, I... I but I, it probably wouldn't have been as depressing. Right. And I don't know what the mentality was behind that. I don't know if there were people that were looking at it like, we just didn't like the direction that Aliens was taking the franchise and we wanted to go back to where we were before. But to me, that feels like putting the genie back in the bottle kind of situation. Uh, I feel like you have to kind of move forward. Um, Having said all that, I do like the idea that um, Ripley can't escape from this thing. And no matter what she does, it's going to cause her trauma and horror. And that's kind of what leads her to make her uh, heroic decision at the end to to die with it. And it, it's like owning, you know, all that trauma and, and turning it on its head. And I do appreciate that. And first blood vessel in uh, Ripley's eye. That is impressive makeup. Oh, yeah. It's a good effect. Yeah. I, I don't know all the details, like, as far as, like, if that's complicated, but it is well done. It looks cool. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's a good touch. Um, it's one of the gross things in the movie that I, yeah. I think works. But there's stuff coming up, like, uh, the autopsy of Newt that just doesn't feel oh, right. Oh, yeah, that was... It just doesn't feel right. It yeah. feels really unnecessarily horrible. Mm-hmm. And actually, apparently, there was more that we have not seen the footage of, thankfully. And they said, it just, you can't show this to people. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, good. Yeah. Um, but this is uh, this is kind of the beginning of a, a game uh, between Tywin Lannister and, um, and Ripley that... Uh, it begins this back and forth of like I got a secret. Well, are you gonna tell me the secret? And and it's like, well, no, you'll think I'm crazy. And it's like, well, then how can I help you? And they just go in circles again and again and again. And then Tywin Lannister gets killed. And that's that's the end of that story. Yeah, it's a it's a strange screenplay structure, <laughs> to say the least. Um. I liked the uh, the look of the um, the morgue here. The oh yeah, wall full of yeah oh, yeah. Doors. I like the I need I I think the production design is worth talking about because you can see because they went into production pre production with the Vincent Ward script, and I can see little elements of like the church thing they were going for, mm-hmm. and they had to gerrymander that into a prison colony. Right. And, you know, like, even that staircase, even, I, I think, kind of looks like maybe could have gone up into a church spire or and something. You, you can tell at some points they built a set, and then they decided to, they wrote a scene around a set that they just built in their, you know, when they oh, had yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. You know? And we'll, you know, we'll we'll get into that, because there are some things, like, there's some stuff, I think, that's like, that looks like a church, like a stained glass window almost. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is just not... Like, I, I understand it, and and it is a little bit moving, like, it, with uh, with Ripley wanting one last, you know, you know, wanting to see Newt again, and also wanting to make sure, purely for utilitarian reasons, that there isn't an alien in her. But at the same time, it's just... Anytime there's a dead kid, and especially a kid that we grew to love, it's it, it just doesn't yeah it's just not it's just in very bad taste it's not like you can even make the argument that well alien is supposed to be dark and horrible and that's fine but i i think one of the things that people overlook sometimes is it's not just about the dark and the horrible it's about overcoming the dark and the horrible which does happen at the end of this movie in my opinion but it, it, it Again, I just don't think th- this is unnecessarily morbid. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's sort of my take on the yeah, the entire movie is just a little bit 
like it's a little too depressing for it to be like entertaining at all. Which yeah, it's still a, the first two movies were entertaining as hell. Yes, yeah, a hundred percent. And and this one, again, I I feel like it's unclear what it's trying to say unless you want to accept that it's just because it's uh insanely um you know ridiculously depressing but um beyond that it's it's not entirely clear what it's trying to say because it's not a scary movie no it has its mo- it has the occasional moment where mm-hmm. you're waiting you know you're, you're in a little bit of suspense but mm-hmm. it's not great suspense not at all yeah this is the autopsy i hate this this I kind of like that shot. That I mean, it's that a shot it, of the drain. I mean, it's a good. Down. I mean, it's a good way to show it without showing it. But yeah. It's like the gruesomeness of it that it's creating in your mind isn't the right kind of gruesomeness. Right. It's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it's. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, I believe um, Charles Dance here is just uh, uh, so. So Ripley's just said that uh, it's cholera. Yeah, and uh, Charles Dance is like, "Well, that's bullshit," and I and I do gotta say this: uh, the acting in this movie is very good. Charles Dance is a class act, uh, and you know Ripley uh, Sigourney Weaver, of course, is you know a fantastic actress. So the the actors are doing the best they can with the material, but it's also I don't know, it's just not in the grand scheme of things, it's just not very good. Oh, that yeah. I didn't like that shot. Yeah, no, it's gross. It's yeah. like saw. Right. <laughs> this is the sound effect of the ribs. <laughs> yeah. Floods. Flooded with water. Flooded with fluid. There goes she drowned. How did all that water get in the uh well, they like crash into the ocean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, since I'm not a complete idiot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're getting this, uh, the beginning of that part. Here's Superintendent Andrews, whose famous line was, uh, this is rumor control, here are the facts. Super Nintendo Andrews? <laughs> Super Nintendo Andrews, I hope you're ready for an unforgettable movie. <laughs> <laughs> strong mr clemens um this is uh this is an interesting scene because uh we kind of get charles dance being a bit diplomatic with uh, the super in- superintendent um the, it, the, all the characters in this movie are oh like they they aren't really complete characters. I don't know if there's a single complete character except maybe Ripley. Yes. In this I, movie. I, I agree a hundred percent. I think Ripley's the I, I think everything circles around Ripley. Yeah. Uh, and then and, and then um I would say uh um what's his what's his face? Um the the the, the lead monk. Yeah. I, I the guy with the glasses. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I will remember his name. Yeah, he, he was good. Um, yeah, I think those are the two most complete. Charles Dance has just got an uncanny ability to like like Charles Dance can make an incomplete character complete. Yeah, because he's a good actor, but even then, his character is horribly underwritten. Yeah, it's I I really just don't like that every every single character in this movie is a stock character except for Ripley and yeah, the guy with the glasses. It, it, yeah. Yeah, and th- this is kind of what I was getting at, and this is a weird scene, because it's like the super superintendent suddenly goes into this exposition about the prisoners, uh-huh. and I don't I don't know if there was any justification for him to, to go in there. I don't know. Actors can make things work, and I think... It doesn't work. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. It's not a big deal. That's, yeah. that's me throwing, that's me doing peanut gallery, but it, it's like I, it just I remember seeing that and thinking, oh, that's weird. Why did you put that exposition there? Yeah. Hmm. 
So I saw in that Wreckage and Ruin documentary, they, they pointed out that uh, Fincher did not want the second the second unit to be shooting much. Really? Yes. That That's... That's it's, weird. It sounds right for Fincher. I mean, it's, yeah, it does sound like <laughs> Fincher, but that yeah. with a big special effects movie like this, that's that's kind of like Spielberg wanting to shoot Jaws uh, on the ocean yeah. kind of thing. Like, why didn't you just use the big pool? He was pretty much saying that if the second unit shot at anything that wasn't up to his standards, somehow that would end up in the movie. Oh, I think so he wanted to... I think that does kind of bring up a, 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 a well, you know, we got to talk about the ox here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't really like the idea that the uh, alien comes out of an ox. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Um, That's clearly from the Vincent Ward. Yeah, I, pref script. I prefer, I think it makes more sense for the alien to come out of a dog, but yeah. whatever. Um, the... Uh, there's a narrative surrounding this movie about like Fincher and it, and, you know, and the, certainly the wreckage and rage documentary paints, um, you know, uh, an idea that, you know, this was a messy production there and there was blame to be found everywhere on the producers, uh, you know, but uh, is in the studio, but um, I don't know if Fincher is necessarily blameless um, in, in, from my, what I can tell. It's I, I think, Fincher probably was an opportunist on this. I, I think he saw this as his ticket into Hollywood. Um, but I, I don't know if he nests. I don't know what his vision for this movie was, frankly. Unless he wanted to make something really super gloomy and depressing, then congratulations. But I think he wanted to make... Any, whatever the studio wanted. Uh, I need to point out that that was actually the, the queen face hugger oh, yeah? that I was telling you about. It, it's in the, That was the shot. You can't even tell that it's... There's it looks any, like a face hugger. It doesn't look like it was a unique face hugger. Right. And it's not clear how any of the... How any of the... Ex, how, any, how the alien got anywhere. I don't know. Um, but anyway, yeah. I think you're... Uh, you're right. I think... Fincher was trying to um, make whatever the studio wanted, and the studio didn't know what they wanted, and that made him very frustrated. So I think he said, "I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna make a bunch of good-looking footage." Well, he also wanted to burn all the footage. Uh, oh, really? Well, we, there was that anecdote. Someone, I missed that. Yeah, someone said, uh, "Where I was asking Fincher about what he wanted to do," and he's like, "I oh, don't. What I want to do is burn all the footage and start over." Sounds about right. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so, and of course, you know, I think Fincher has earned a, you know, a reputation as a pretty stellar director over the years. I don't know if he was really all that passionate about this, about this film. I think he liked Alien a lot and he thought he could make a good Alien movie. Yeah. But then... He realized he was in over his head and said, I'm okay, fine. I'm only gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna make a movie. Yeah. You know? Well, he also, but he also wanted a lot of, he also wanted to put his stamp on it because yeah. he wanted that level of control. Like, he didn't want the second unit shooting anything. Right. So, but, so that's kind of what I'm saying. There's a little bit of mixed messages. That, yeah. A little bit. Um, I, I do like this editing, just, you know, purely superficially, like we have the funeral a juxtaposed, you know, the burial of of two bodies juxtaposed with the birth of another. Yeah, yeah. I like the way they did that in the um, the theatrical theatrical cut. It was yeah. different, but yeah, I like that. I just prefer the alien being born out of a dog. It, it just yeah. makes much more sense than it. Uh, like, how did the face hugger face hug an ox? Like, I can see it face-hugging a dog. Well, it's got that strong tail. Well, right, but it's... I don't know, it's a little bit weird to me, and also, I don't know, we had... It, we had the Kenner alien toy lines, and there was an ox xenomorph, and it had, like, horns and shit, and, you know, I'm not saying that those are canon or anything, I'm just saying, like, I can see, like, the alien being birthed 
from a dog and still kind of resembling the creature that we see in this movie. Whereas I think if it comes out of an ox, it's almost something different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bloody. She's always getting bloody noses in these movies. Might want to see a doctor about that. Yeah. Charles Dance. Get it cauterized. Yeah. Um, Ooh. So I, the alien puppet in this movie, there's a lot of scenes where it looks good, and then there's a lot of scenes where it looks like total garbage. That's a pretty good scene. Yeah, no, this this is fine. I actually like the little Bambi buse, uh, burster. That's what that's called? Yeah, that's what they called it. Um, and that's I think, right. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's, it's, can we keep them? <laughs> no, those, those, that shot there didn't look... Great. I mean, it looks like CGI, but yeah. I, I like the way it moves, though. I think it's interesting. Yeah. So, that was uh, David Fincher wanting Ripley to be bald. And part of it's, there is a reason. It's because of all the lice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they explain it well. Yeah. But it's just funny that Fincher, I like yeah. the quote in the yeah. documentary. Yeah. yeah. How, many th how many times did Fincher shoot this scene? David Fincher shoots scenes over a hundred times. I don't. Was he afforded that luxury on on this movie? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I think I, they mentioned in the documentary they mentioned he'd shoot, you know, twelve, probably up to twenty times. Oh, so oh, okay. You know, the, the, well, this was his first movie. Yeah, he he's just got to start out. Yeah, those are rookie numbers. Yeah. <laughs> My opinion, you don't have to shoot a scene 20 times, but to each his own, from director to director, everyone's got their own style. It depends on the scene. It I think there's definitely times. Oh, yeah, for sure, but I'm yeah. just saying for Fincher, it's a general rule right. to shoot something 100 times. And I'm like, to me, it's like you shouldn't have to shoot more. Than, like, generally, on average, you shouldn't have to shoot more than 10 times, if that. If that. Sometimes five or less. So this is a bit of an extra scene in the assembly cut. We see a little bit more of kind of some of the attitude the prisoners have and how they relate to one another. Um, and we see that they really don't like Gallic, who Gallic has a much uh, much more expanded role in this version of the film than he okay. does in the theatrical cut. Like I was telling you, the entire midpoint of the movie uh, in this version is different from the theatrical version. Um, I believe the uh, monk with the glasses, Charles S. Dutton, and I, I swear, I, I, I keep on forgetting this character's name, but I, I think he does, Charles, uh, Charles S. Dutton does a very good job here, and I do like this character sort of being the one that keeps the, um, the prisoners in line, and he keeps, uh, um, keeps up the morale among them. So he's he's kind of coming in and kiboshing this little squabble that they have and preserving order. Okay. But then Ripley shows up and they're like, we don't like you because you're a woman. Yeah, it's it's not. There's, yeah. there's a lot of problems. Yeah. yeah I, well, <laughs> yeah, it, it's. It's just weird because they develop this religion. The if, if we accept this movie as is the the uh, the prisoners have this religion where they uh, they don't like women or temptation, I guess. Which maybe I mean there's you I mean, can these are all criminals. Right. Well, they're following a logic because they're 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 murderers, they're rapists, and they're trying to reform in some way. Um, but you know. It's not necessarily the healthiest way to deal with that, <laughs> and uh, it implies that there's still there's still problems. But I also don't think the movie is trying to excuse them either. Oh, it's not about that at all. Right? Yeah. That's the that's the weirdest thing to me. It's like that's part of these early scenes, but once 
Yeah. Once like the action really gets rolling, that's completely kind of yeah. It's just it's more just not there. It's just more like uh, it, it's just kind of more thematic material in a way, or just it, just on the surface. But you could have done it with like Marines who've been trapped on a planet for ten years, let's say, and it would have probably had the same yeah same effect. I do think it's interesting, and. The thing I like about this, I, I like the third act of this movie a lot. Like, the third act in the ending, I think, is very good. But these first two acts are just really weird and sloppy. But once it gets there, um, once it gets a, you know, it, it, that's when I, I think we can start talking more about the bright side of this. Yeah. Um, but again, that's my, my problem with the... Uh... It's extended cut. Yeah, it's just, it's cut. just, it's really fucking slow. Yeah, and it's a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, um, this is not an easy film to sit through. Because it, it, it's so oppressively depressing. And it's, it's, in terms of storytelling, it's just very sloppy. Um, it's hard to sit through this. Uh, it, it really is. If, to be honest, I, I have to rate, and I haven't seen it in a while. I have to write Alien Resurrection over this movie. I, I really do think this is the weakest Alien film. And that's including the, the prequels. Even though those movies also have problems, I, I think they're better realized than this is. So again, yeah. I like the production design of this movie. I gotta say, even though you, there's a lot of different ideas going on, yeah, I, I, I it think, looks good. I think it's... Well accomplished for what it is. It's just, it's clear there wasn't any, like, I, I mean, they were being pulled in several different directions and they didn't know what direction they were going in and they didn't, um, yeah, they just had to kind of make up stuff, really. Mm -hmm. And that's true with the visual effects team. Like I was just talking about with the queen face hugger. It's like, they didn't know if that was something that was going to be in the movie or not. Mm -hmm. And if we accept that as canon, which it's not clear which version of the film is canon, it's like, I, we don't know how that even works. Like, how does a queen face hugger get born? How did Ripley get impregnated with it? Like, was her was her cryo tube broken open? I don't remember. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 really weird and messy and it's yeah. You know I gotta say I gotta give a lot of credit to Fincher for turning out a movie that uh, a mo a movie out of what he was working with. You oh, know. Oh yeah, and that was something that me and Justin were talking about with this. It's like for nowadays, if this movie came out nowadays, I think it might have have been better received in a number of ways um but the standard for mediocrity has lowered so much since uh 1992 and it's like at the time absolutely this people were right to really dislike this movie like i said having new uh hicks killed right from the offset it just is just not it, it's a betrayal of the audience it's bad taste uh, but if you it took people over a decade to kind of look past that and see the better qualities of it. Mm -hmm. It's it's like... Uh, yeah, compared to a lot of the blockbusters made nowadays, I think this would be considered a solid blockbuster. Yeah. These I, days. It, it's... Just, yeah, it's... somewhat competently made. It's just... Relative to the other movies, mm -hmm. it's super messy. Yeah. But I gotta give credit to Fincher, because he, he made a bunch of good scenes. I agree. You know, I, I think he made a bunch of really great scenes and there's some very beautiful camera work and very beautiful lighting and it is very moody. I, I don't have a problem. Like there's a lot of individual moments in this film that I think are great. Yeah. And from a cinematic perspective like this, this is super creepy. And I, yeah. the problem is as a whole, it doesn't work. It, it, yeah. As a whole, the, the production is just really sloppy. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's, I can like, I even like individually, I love the moment at the beginning when the e, uh, EEV crashes into the ocean. I think that's a beautiful frame. It's just not, you know, again, 
fun. I got to talk a little bit about this here. So uh, Charles Dance and uh, and Ripley, uh, it's implied they have just uh, slept together, which is, I guess, forbidden uh, in, in this prison colony. But this is the point in terms of storytelling where the characters have found this newfound intimacy with one another. And this is the point where Ripley is supposed to tell Charles Dance her secret and he's got to decide what to do with that information. And then their relationship changes. You know, that's what having sex with somebody changes the relationship. And instead they go back to the same game of like, you know, uh, you know, he, he's saying, so are you going to tell me? It's like, you know, did you think the sex was good? And it's just like, oh my fucking God. Um, this, it, it's a weird nothing plot line, unfortunately. I do, on the plus side, I, I do kind of like, it, it is nice that Ripley kind of, who is this very traumatized character, does have a nice human moment. And it's nice to have that connection and that validation. Um, in a depressing movie, but again, just in terms of storytelling, this is what's supposed to happen, and then the movie doesn't really, either doesn't want to go there, or doesn't know it should go there, or I don't know. But I, I feel like it was a waste of Charles Dance. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Oh. That does deserve an explanation. Uh. <laughs> We're not gonna tell. So who who wrote this? J.J. Abrams. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, Linda Loft uh, was involved at some point. I don't know. <laughs> They're just. It's just purely utilitarian. We're gonna we're gonna use each other for uh, for uh, for sex, and then we're just gonna go about our day. Is sex is just uh it's a very it's a very cynical process in in future world. Mm -hmm. And now he's got to go. Official duties. You gotta take a dump. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's what I would say. It's like, excuse, I got a official duties. So. Um. What is she thinking about? The Aliens. Yeah, probably. <laughs> what else is she thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? It was Murphy. How do you know? Why did they bring the doctor? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing he can do about this. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> we need your professional opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and also how did charles dance know it was murphy based upon his shoes like does he just keep tabs on everybody's shoes <laughs> <laughs> the death was instantaneous brilliant wow <laughs> thanks einstein <laughs> yeah yeah well um i told him so many times stay away from the fans if only he'd stayed away from the fans <laughs> stay away from the fans kids and get your coronavirus vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so now Charles Dance... Uh, yeah, he likes to taste blood. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's he's, uh, it's like uh, it's like the wizard character from the Hobbit movies. He's gonna, gonna taste it, figure out what it is. <laughs> hmm. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I forget what's happening. What what is she doing? Oh, she's trying to get a uh, get bishop. Get bishop, yeah. We get a surprise appearance by uh, animatronic Lance Henriksen. That was a pretty good animatronic. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. We're about to see it. Yeah, yeah. We're about to see that, and uh, then we get to see the real Lance Henriksen later. Yeah, man, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, I and I and I do like that. We'll talk about that when we get there, but. Um, so she's trying to get Lance Henriksen, and then, oh, Charles Dance. 
You have a jump scare, there's nothing scarier than Charles Dance looking over your shoulder. To be fair, I'd be super intimidated. I wouldn't fuck with Charles Dance. No. Well, she did. There you go. <laughs> and Charles Dance uh, is a is a uh, is a force. Did he get an Oscar now? I don't know if he's ever been nominated for an Oscar. I mean, I just mean last year. For, uh, for Mank? Yeah, the supporting actor. No, I don't okay. think so. Um, yeah, he, I, he was good. I don't know I don't know if he's ever been nominated for an Oscar. Um, he should be because he's, he's a fantastic actor. And it's not... I'm not just saying that because of Game of Thrones. He, he takes every role that he does, even his goofier ones, like from the Ali G movie. I don't remember him in the Ali G. Yeah, he, he was in the Ali G movie. Um, and he was in that crappy 2016 Ghostbusters movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was. And he's... He, whatever it is he's doing, he, he was in Godzilla King of the Monsters, which was not very good. Yeah, uh, I've he, only seen three of his movies yeah. that I know of. He, he takes those roles and he takes these awful lines and he makes them work. Yeah, he's he's a little campy sometimes. Sure, but, but he's, that's, that's he's kind wrong of with he's, that. he's very like theatrical. He's very yeah, Shakespearean. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, and but I think that works, and I, and I actually think it works pretty well in a movie like this. Yes, because it, it's it, it's such a it's not as flamboyant as like the original Vincent Ward script, but it's still kind of you know it's got this big you know that's scope. a cool fucking shot. That is a good. That's a really amazing shot. I agree. So this is an interesting extended scene in the assembly cut. Like in the theatrical cut, this is a much faster scene. And in this, I think they go and do a little bit more of a back and forth with um, Super Nintendo Andrews and, uh, and Tywin Lannister. Um, it gives us a little bit more insight into their relationship and it also gives puts a little bit more tension into the into the story because you know a more pressure on charles dance basically um but is it necessary i don't know i mean to be fair every character could be cut except for like three and except for sigourney weaver charles dance you know, no, be interesting. There's in Studio Utani, um, there's a lot of people that have done like uh, fan edits of like Prometheus and Alien Covenant, which I, I've seen a couple of them and I think they're pretty good. I don't know if anyone's ever done a fan edit of this movie. I might want to try and give this a shot, honestly. Yeah, I, I'd like to see if I if I can cut a more coherent movie out of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, coherent, it, it's a coherent film, it's just kind of weird and sloppy. Yeah. You know, it goes on in parts when it doesn't, doesn't need to, to, and then it, it slows down in parts when it should be moving on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, again... No, I went the other way around. Well, yeah. No, I get. I know what you mean. Yeah. It's just, again, it's it feels directionless. Yeah. Which is weird, because every, no. every scene yeah. is very well directed. From a technical point of view, <laughs> yes. It's yeah. just... Again, the it's weird. It's the movie is not the sum of its parts. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Dance, I I keep on I keep on, you know, filleting Charles Dance, but I, I I even in just scenes like this where he's just, you know, getting chewed out, you can see how he's internalizing all of this and processing things and how he's gonna deal with it. That's good. Yeah. It's just good acting. Yeah. And the close-ups here, this you know, is really helping there as well. So, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Some very um, well-directed technical scenes. It's just not, um, yeah, it's just, yeah. I keep on going over that point, and I probably need to say different things. <laughs> I, people have already checked out at this point. It's like, yeah, they're not saying anything interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I like all the fog everywhere. Oh yeah, fog it's always helps. A very foggy uh, planet. Yeah. I I guess so. I mean, it's 
It's like a beach planet. I don't know what kind of planet it is. Mountain. Oh, so it's like San Francisco or something? Well, I mean, we saw the beach and we saw the lice, so it's almost like a dry... Um, well, it's not dry because it's got an ocean. And I don't know. What, it's not entirely clear what kind of planet this is. I think in the Vincent Ward script uh, with the wooden planet, which was... That was a weird idea. Um, and I don't know why they couldn't have just been monks living on, like, a remote satellite. I don't know why it had to be a wooden planet. Because that seemed to be more the point of contention. I like the monk idea. Mm -hmm. It's it's just the... Um, the wooden planet. Like, I like the idea of the wooden planet. But I completely understand why the studio said, you know... Turn, turn that down eventually. Yeah, they greenlit it because it is kind of interesting. It just doesn't fit with anything else in the series. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this is the... Uh, I, I kind of like... That's a good shot. There's there's some good shots here. So this is the... Uh, um, the uh, the uh, assault scene. And they stole one of the shots out of that uh, accused... Jodie Foster. Oh, which, which the way one? it framed uh, her facing the two guys. Oh, I'm not. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Well, in the right, they showed her in the center. Oh, with oh, the oh, two oh, silhouettes on either side of her. Yeah, yeah. But there's only so many ways. Yeah, no, it's, it's not a bad thing necessarily. Yeah. So this is like this weird rock and roll score for this, and I don't... It's a weird Clockwork Orange kind of yeah. thing going it, on. Yeah. That's, that's the closest I can compare this scene to. No, I think that's a good comparison. It's just... Yeah. It, it's just weird. And I don't know how I feel about it. It's like Charles S. Dutton coming... Yeah. Yeah. yeah beat him up. <laughs> It's actually kind of cathartic. Yeah. Um, but it's, again, it's really, I, th I think you're right. A clockwork Orange is, is a good sort of point of reference for this scene. But A Clockwork Orange is a well-made movie. Yes. With a, boom! Right in the kisser. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb. Yeah, I, I don't know. Just Clockwork Orange has a point. Yes. And, uh... I don't know if this does. It just feels right. like a... That we, scene, no, that scene had not... It, never, yeah, it, it never just, came up again in the movie, really. It just feels like we needed to have an action scene. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It never gets... It, it like, it doesn't affect Ripley's... No, trust. Ripley's already... Yeah. Yeah. She's... She... Yeah, it, it doesn't... Again, it's like the Charles Dance thing. It, like, it doesn't change the relationship... With with anything with any so nothing that happens in this movie has an effect on yeah the movie <laughs> yeah so the, the plot <laughs> I would, I would agree. <laughs> it's it's like the, the it, stuff is happening and it's not affecting anything else and that's a plot isn't supposed to work that way right plot's supposed to be like you know it, it's not supposed to be and then and then and then it's supposed to be because and then yeah. because they're so yeah. Therefore, and then, you know, things are changing constantly, and in this, nothing really changes. Except for the alien posing more of a threat, I guess. Sure. That's like the driving force of the whole movie, which I think the other movies had better. Yeah. Aliens, I, I mean, the other movies are scary. This movie really isn't scary. And it, and I think that's probably another reason why people didn't like it. Yeah. Um, I do think it's interesting that they were trying to kind of. I I think there is an interesting philosophical weight. Uh, on it, especially in the third act, but. I, just don't know if that was the right direction necessarily. Yeah. After you find uh, yeah. you find out that Ripley's got the. The queen. The queen insider. Yeah, that's when stuff starts happening. Yes. Like, everything before that is just, like, inconsequential. That's like an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long-ass time. Now, the alien is drooling here. I don't... 
Does it like have diarrhea or something? <laughs> I've never seen him drip that much uh, in, in in any of the other movies. Look, now, now, actually, I gotta talk about this scene here for a second. Was that su scene supposed to take place in like a really really dark room or something? I don't know. Because how did he not see the alien? It was right there. It, it... Was it behind him? Well, no, it was in front of him. Oh. Uh. He, but he saw the dripping, but then he didn't see the alien, and it was, like, right there on the ground, and it rose up. Uh, like, it, that might have worked if the, if the scene was dark, but yeah. it's, it's not. So, I don't know. I, on a technical level, I, I think that's a little bit... I, I think that's a case of, like, maybe that scene wasn't shot particularly well. Yeah. Uh, you could make the case there, but... Yeah, oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's uh oh, some another prisoner down. I don't know which one, and I don't. I I mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to be happy or sad because these people are murderers and rapists, and they did just try to rape Ripley. So I, uh, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to feel bad or not. It's it's confusing. Oh no, the alien. I like that character. Ah! You get sprayed in the face with, you know, s uh, strawberry syrup. And it ain't bad. Yeah. Here's two hundred dollars. That's actually that's actually a very bad pay rate for an actor. He only made two hundred bucks. No. Oh. I just threw out a random number and I realized it wasn't a good number. Not an accurate number that reflects usual pay rate. So uh, now we get Lance Henriks in here, and this is this is kind of cool. I I like that um, they were trying to make something that was clearly like something that you couldn't just do with the actual actor. Like like this was a special effect. At the same time, I think having the actor there brings a whole lot of soul to something, to the scene. That So he wasn't even involved in this scene, except well, maybe the voice. Except for the voice. Okay. Um, beyond, huh. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is very good, and, I, and it has a lot of character to it, and I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying that. I, 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 a part of me does kind of want to see the actor, but I don't know. That's that's just me. So this is an added scene. Um, Gullick, um So Gullick uh, has a an expanded role in the story, and um, it started with him getting uh, getting the blood on his face. Um, you know, I don't know if I should... I, I mean, you saw the documentary, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he, he basically now has kind of a... He's kind of got a... Um, what would you say? Uh, a theological, spiritual connection to the alien. He feels. Huh. That okay. He feels. Because it spared him. Yeah. The fire was electrical. In the sub -story. So, so this is a bit we're getting a little bit of the backstory that happened in the opening credits um i don't know if it really says anything more like it like we know there's an alien it doesn't tell us anything we don't already know i i, I don't feel like and this line here, it was with us the whole way, is kind of vague to me. Like, what does that mean? Was it was it always on the Sulaco and Bishop just didn't tell anyone because he's an asshole? Or was it um, because, uh, it, or it was, it was there after the fact? I don't know. It's, it's like, a, it's, it's. I feel like it's backstory that doesn't explain anything. Would you say so? Yeah. Do me a favor, disconnect me. 
brother could nothing. And not a consistent character for Bishop. I really that is that's one of my problems with You don't you don't think this is consistent with the character from the last one? Not really. I think he'd be be more helpful. (laughs) I I yeah, I agree actually. I, I feel like Bishop would try to do more. Yeah. And just needed him for a little exposition that wasn't there. Right. And so we could say Lance Henriksen was in the movie. Yeah. Just kiss already. So they think uh, Dalek uh, is the one that's murdering people. Which I actually kind of like this because it... um. Now, here's the thing, though. If Charles Dance knew the secret about the alien that Ripley's, you know, if Ripley told him, then that would create some interesting conflict in the scene because now they're thinking, okay, Gallic murdered um, everybody. So, you know, Charles Dance has to make a decision about what he's going to do here. But instead, nothing happens. Uh But, like, you you see what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And but how long were you standing there? So I have to talk to him about this dragon. Not interested in your opinion. It, nothing happens in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> nothing is happening. It's hard to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> it's just they're talking and, s- and they're saying stuff, and the action isn't moving forward in any meaningful way. Yeah. Uh, and the, being told stuff that we already know. Oh, it's an it's an eight foot creature. That's a good. Op- that's a good point. They really are just. It's got acid for blood, and it kills people on sight. You skip this. This is the dialogue you skip. Yes. Because big... you know, they showed a cut that indicated they moved forward a bunch of time, but they're still talking about yeah. what we already know. Yeah, and they actually do it again later. Actually, when Ripley finds out she has a queen, she actually states two separate times it's a queen alien. And it's like they were two different versions of the same scene. And they just put both of them. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it's called the assembly cut because they're assembling what they had. Yeah. And it, without it being like a, a work print kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, it resembles something of a narrative. So this is another plot point from the Vincent Ward script that made more sense in the Vincent Ward script that there's no weapons here. Uh, because they were monks. Um, but this is a prison colony, and they're saying, we don't have weapons here. Which... I, it's confusing, because yeah. there's, like... It's not clear what the relationship here is, because you got a warden, or a superintendent, and then you got a bunch of prisoners that are basically able to roam fr- freely, and they're not even... They're not... They don't have prison cells or anything. Like, this is supposed to be a prison colony. They don't have... Where are the cells at? Mm-hmm. Like, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a weird movie. Huh? Uh, supply ship comes every six months. Uh, that was another plot point from the Vincent Ward script. Um, what scene? This is this is difficult to talk about. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, they're they're just talking about things that could be covered a lot quicker. Yeah, they could have yeah. established all of this in a couple of lines in the first two minutes. Yeah, and well, they just keep going on and on. Yeah, and we're explaining and we're explaining and we're st- stuff is happening with no consequence. And if there was a little bit of comedy. A little bit more, a little bit of something more going on in these scenes, they'd be a lot more watchable. Yeah, you know, but it's just well, there's also that one character. Yeah, there's that one character, um, eighty-five. I think 
uh, it was either David Geiler or Walter Hill that was uh, saying that I telling trying to tell Fincher I think this character is supposed to be funny, but that's not how uh, that's not how he plays it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I, it, this is like I can't wait till we get to Act Three because that's when stuff finally happens. Yeah. And the, the, and this scene here, even this is the accumulation of this nothing romance between Ripley and the Doctor, and he's just gonna get inexplicably murdered. And it's just like it didn't amount to anything. Yeah, it's not even like this is the one character that can help me, and I lose him, and now I'm on my own. Nothing happens. There's no consequence. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 th th this is dumb too. It's like, oh, you don't mind him. I'll just close the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can still hear you. Is can he, you still hear me? He stopped talking though once you close the curtain. I guess so. He's, his his yeah. vision's based on movement, <laughs> <laughs> like a T Rex. <laughs> oh, God damn, this fucking movie, man. Yeah. I gotta, I, I gotta see Alien Resurrection, but listen, say what you will about Alien Resurrection, it's it's a much more competently made movie than okay. than this. I believe it. I, I I mean I'm not not you necessarily. There's a lot of people that don't like Alien Resurrection that actually refuse to acknowledge re Alien Resurrection. I'm like, I think it's a much better movie than this. Well, the guy who made Alien Resurrection was a director who'd already done features. Well, yeah, and he's also. He was pretty clear in what he wanted to do, and yeah. he largely accomplished it. There are problems with Alien Resurrection I, that I would be happy to acknowledge and talk about, but do I think it's better than Alien 3? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, even Alien Covenant and Prometheus, for all their problems, are have stuff going on. Stuff happens. Yeah. The plot keeps moving forward. There's nothing in this. Ah, oh, man. It, it's... All the good stuff about it is just purely superficial. Even this, like, right here, like, this doesn't add anything. No. I mean, it could have earlier, but they don't use it in any meaningful way for the story. Right. Like, I... There's good shots. There's the good production design. There's, there's some great individual moments, but as a whole, this movie just goes on and on and on, and I'm finding it very difficult to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> if it was... You know, I think... There were too many cooks in the kitchen on it. There, there was you too know. much pressure yeah. on this movie to get it... They wanted a, a movie that was going to, you know, save the studio. Which you shouldn't... You shouldn't be betting on one movie to save your studio. You got a problem. Yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, Charles Dance just told her the story about how he accidentally killed somebody. Did he just take a dump on him? Like what? <laughs> I don't know. His bed was sinking in. Uh, but uh, it's like uh, Charles Dance was just uh, telling her the story, do you trust me? And it's like it doesn't me end up mattering to anything because he ends up getting killed. Uh-huh. I don't know what the consequence of any of this shit is. Oh no! Now Charles Dance is gone. Yeah. What What was a better death, the this or him dying on the toilet in Game of Thrones? Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That that storyline didn't add up. This is the first terrible shot of the yes. aliens. This. This now, now this is good. Th yeah. Th well, this is the money shot. This isn't yeah. all the promotional materials. Um, the, I like the rod puppet in like how it moves, but the way that it's composited into some of these scenes, it looks garbage. It looks like total garbage. Um, there's one shot in it later on where I, I, I think it actually works really well, but there's a lot of scenes where I'm just like, this doesn't, th there's no shadows or, or anything. It doesn't feel like it's in the scene. Hmm. 
Yeah, the... I mean, I don't understand what kind of prison colony this is supposed to be. Like, I mean, is the is the prison colony itself, like, like just the prison? Like, they're not getting off this planet? I'm just saying it works better as a monastery. Yeah. I, I mean, the only problem with the Vincent Ward script was the wooden planet. Like, if you just set it on the regular planet and just make it a monastery, it works much better. I completely understand the studio being afraid of him, having him direct the movie. Well, yeah, because he's very, like, artsy-fartsy and shit. Yeah, and he won. A lot of his ideas were crazy. I, they I, would have been... I, don't get me wrong. Um, I would have liked to see them, uh -huh. but they were crazy. No, I, I... I mean, I like the religious connotations a lot. I, I even, like... I like some of the crazy alien designs because it's like demonic in, in a way, but it, it's, it is very surreal and it's not necessarily something that the studio wanted to spend, you know, a hundred million dollars on. And you're making a movie that's supposed to save your studio. You don't yeah. give it to a surrealist. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. Like I, I did want to point out those, some of those windows look like church windows, like stained glass. Yeah. Um, but, and, and then this is a weird scene too because Superintendent, uh, uh Superintendent Calmers <laughs> is, uh, is selling a different narrative to all these prisoners and we're supposed, there's supposed to be some tension, like, he's telling them a different story that's fighting against Ripley and, uh, this is, this is funny. This is a good character moment, actually. Yeah. I like this. One of the few really good character moments. Um, but, it doesn't end up mattering to anything uh, that he's selling them a different narrative because they discover right away that it's not true. Uh -huh. Again, stuff happens, and but it, there's no consequences. Right. So we're kind of reaching the tail end of Act 2, I think. Uh -huh. Like, we're not... I, I, I think the... The second turning point is when um, we have that scene with um, with Charles S. Dutton and uh, and uh, Ripley where she's asking him to kill her and he doesn't do it. No, the second turning point is when they make the speech when uh, to all the prisoners about fighting the alien. That's the second turning point. Um, we we uh, I think yeah, what just happened with Charles Dennis getting murdered and. Uh, them finding out about the alien. That's the midpoint. So. And then the pit of despair, I think, is the her finding out about the queen. But it isn't until that moment, again, it's not until she finds out she's got a queen inside of her that stuff actually starts happening. <laughs> that, that, uh, the stuff that actually is meaningful to the story. So... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not even halfway. It, Are you serious? No, I forgot. No, yeah, I forgot. They're going to try and capture the alien. <laughs> That's the midpoint. I'm, uh, this movie is so fucking hard to follow. <laughs> There's no faces. No I got more than an hour left. <laughs> Yes, I think so. This is... Folks, oh, folks, I, I understand that there's people that like this movie, and I understand why you like it, and honestly, I, I, under, I, I like the certain moments that you're talking about, but until we get to Act 3, this movie is... This is a slog. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't even... There's not even much to talk about with this. It, it's... Uh, I don't know. I 
Like, like, was there, this is, a, see, again, nice shot, nice shot. Yeah. But, but, uh, kind of like what I was saying, though, there's, like, a completely different, like, midpoint in this movie, and it has to do with this plot to try and capture the alien, and in the theatrical cut, like, the theatrical cut moves a lot faster. Yeah. Um, which, in my opinion, and Justin's opinion, obviously, is probably for the best. Um, but uh, it is an interesting um, extra storyline. Um, with, with, is it at least going to be good? <laughs> it's interesting. Okay. Kind of. I mean, I, I, I think it's... I, I think the midpoint in the theatrical cut with the uh, trying to capture the alien and failing works so much better in, in a traditional Hollywood narrative. But I, I do like the um, the unexpectedness of actually catching the thing. Yeah. Uh, and there and it's like it, it's just a little something a little bit different that makes you go, oh, like, like, like it's because it, it means something, something bad is gonna happen. Like it's gonna get out again, um, obviously. But it, it's just, uh, it's kind of playing with expectations in a way, which, for better or worse, I kind of liked it. But at the same time, it's also one of the things that stuff happens and there's no consequence because they caught it. Oh, but I got out again. But I, I, I think the difference there is in terms of the story structure, um, it, it, it's it's just a little bit of um it's actually maybe I guess what I'm kinda of getting at is it's it's a it's a bit of a twist that has something slightly more meaningful to it in a way. I don't know. I don't know. That's me trying to make a case, I guess. Okay. Um so Ripley's starting to take charge here a little bit because we don't have Superintendent Calmers, Super Nintendo Calmers anymore. And so she's sort of stepping up to uh, try and lead them to uh, to catch this thing. Was there any... Why are they Y chromo, chrom, chromosome? Why does that matter? They have double Y chromosome syndrome, which is a fictional disease. Yeah. In the alien universe that makes you prone to violence. Really? Yes. I had no idea. <laughs> we're, so we're, 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 they we're... just have two, they got two Y chromosomes, no X chromosomes. In, rea in real life, everybody has an X chromosome, but there are people with two Y chromosomes and an X chromosome. Okay, and so in this, they don't have an X chromosome, they're a double Y chromosome, and that makes them... More prone to violence. Yes. Okay. Sure. Well, then that kind of explains a little bit why they're isolated. Yeah. Because it's like they're not. They're they're prone to violence and they're prone, you know, to do these horrible things. But there's also a potential in there for them to at least be reformed on a personal level. They just can't be a part of society. Right. Um. Again. I, I, I do think there's an interesting philo why is this a Dutch angle? <laughs> Dude, why is this whole movie Dutch angle? <laughs> it's not it's not quite as bad as Battlefielder. <laughs> um if, if so it, like in the pantheon of bad movies, I would rate this significantly higher than Battlefielder. But yeah. I mean Battlefield Earth is at least kind of entertaining because it's so terrible. This is it's one of those weird things where it's like, it almost is like competent enough that it's not, that it's not fun to watch. Yeah, like if yeah. this if this was a more incompetent movie, like we should probably do a commentary on Alien versus Predator Requiem or something. Yeah, because we'd probably have a lot more fun watching how. What, what, why is that an ass shot? Why is that a crotch shot? I don't get it. Uh, we'd have more fun watching a movie that was bad. Yeah, like this is like. It's just good enough where it's not fun to watch. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of weird. 
what what is this? I know it's like uh, it's that uh, flammable substance, but it looks like caramel. I think it was something radioactive. Oh well, that's not good. What can you do? What can you do? You got a planet full of stuff. Some of it's gonna be radioactive. Yeah, some it's true. But there's a lot. Most things are radioactive, just not lethal. Yeah. In fact, yeah, anything that generates heat is radioactive. I think this whole shot, I liked. I liked it the first time I watched it, but looking at looking at it now, it's stupid. <laughs> well, this whole it's like a that's like a whole minute or two of screen time that they just yeah. It felt like at least a minute. Well, and and it's also this whole plot point is stupid because watch what happens. He's gonna drop the. Oh, like, hey! oh, the oh the alien is just there. Okay, okay, like, but, that but, was alright. But here's the thing: he's gonna drop the cigar, and somehow it's not a cigar or not a cigar, flare, yeah. but whatever. But it's like they see it, and it's in slow motion, but they see it in real time. Yeah, <laughs> like what is this? They needed an explosion. I show the fucking signal. Yeah, so this is the midpoint of the movie. Um, the in the theatrical cut, anyway. Um, yeah. And this is the trap fails, and the they don't catch the alien, and people die. Uh huh. We gotta help these guys. Yeah. The the the, the run, run into a giant fire. Well, great, but great idea. but but they're also like terrible people that tried to rape Ripley earlier in the movie. Like the, again, it's like. The relationships are very poorly defined. I, I it's it's a problem because when these characters die, you're supposed to feel for them, and you kind of don't. Yeah. Like you at least need to. I I don't know. I didn't even know about like the Y chromosome thing. Like if they had explained that better, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. There's a, now, it there's seemed three... a little better explained in the theatrical cut. Maybe, maybe it's because there's just less and it's more home. Yeah. You know? Because I don't even remember that being talked about in any version of the movie. Um, they explain it real quick. What is it? What's with the fisheye lenses? Yeah. I mean, I get it when it's the alien, but... I don't understand when it's just randomly switches to fish eye. It's like someone just stuck a GoPro. Now, none of this was in the theatrical cut, right? This is... This is just... I, from what I remember... I do not recall. In the theatrical cut, I think it blew up, and then we got some shots of people dying, and then it was like... It was yeah, over. I don't remember this guy. I don't remember any of these people. The only... Consequential characters are Ripley, Charles Dance, and, and Charles S. Dutton. Yeah. Like, no one else matters. A Gallic only matters in the assembly cut somewhat. Yeah. This is one of the shots that wasn't in the theatrical cut because they cut the whole plot point about catching the alien, and I actually kind of like that shot. Kind of cool. What about that one? Yeah, yeah, I like the composition of it. Yeah, look at look at it though. Yeah, I know it doesn't feel like it's really there. I don't know. I think it's it, it kind of looks like Ray Harryhausen kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Old Hollywood style. Wait, wait. Oh, that was it. Did they catch it? I guess they did. Huh. Oh yeah, he ran in there, and they uh, it's it's fucking him up. Okay. So that was kind of cool. The bucket splitting open. Yeah. Um. So yeah, kind of like. So this is something I was talking to Justin about before. Like in the theatrical cut, this is completely different. Like uh, this whole like aftermath thing because basically in the theatrical cut they fail to catch the alien so this whole scene plays like you know it's a failure it's um 
the midpoint of the script is supposed to be either a false victory or a false defeat. And in the theatrical cut, it's a false defeat. And in this movie, it, uh, in this version, it's a false victory. But it's also a victory that has uh, some weight to it because, you know... Because everything in this movie is heavy. Yeah. In, in the theatrical cut, it makes more sense because it's just more clear. Okay, they fail, but... In this, it's a lot muddier. I'd rather have the clear false defeat rather than the muddy false victory. <laughs> this is a time of rejoicing, though, so according to uh, this character. But they did capture the alien, so... I mean, I mean that is a false victory, but it's, it's a weird false victory. Yeah. Um... I don't know. Maybe the reason why I like it is because it's just a little... You get to see a little bit more of the alien. Yeah. And Even though, again, I think it's kind of bad VFX composition. It was nominated for an Oscar. Um, it's still... Um, you know, it's... I don't know. I It's maybe just a little bit extra footage that's kind of interesting. I do... I actually legitimately do like that shot of it crawling down the wall. I like the rack focus to it would have been cooler if they actually had it like you know um the uh the background in focus uh and then they and then we see it crawling down and then they rack focus to it that, that would have been a sweet shot mm -hmm. and that would have lent a lot of credence to it being actually present but what can you do hindsight is twenty twenty. So this is where um, there's a little bit more depth, I feel, kind of being given to 85 here a little bit. Um, again, I think this is the character that uh, they were saying uh, was supposed to be um, the comedic character and just wasn't played comedically. And there are lines that he says that are kind of funny, but they're not played like jokes. Right. Like the zebra line that he had earlier. Yeah. So uh, that's actually kind of an interesting point, too, because I think a lot of this actually... David Fincher, this is his first feature. Before this, he had a pretty gosh darn prolific uh, music video directing career. Yeah. And there are... A lot of this does kind of feel like a music video. Yeah. Even especially shots like this. This looks like straight like out of a, a you know early '90s grunge band or something. Yeah. And yeah. and the movie does feel super grungy, like yeah. And, and that's, I that's kind of cool. And yeah. And I can understand that appeal very much. It's just, just not a good story, guys. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. You better fucking behave yourself. You're not getting none of my shit. So, um, Charles S. Dutton advocated for this character earlier in the movie, saying he's, and uh, I guess he was a uh, misjudged him, maybe. No more cigarettes for you. It's supposed to be like a one-liner. Like an Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. No more cigarettes for you. Uh, so... So this is interesting, and this is only in the assembly cut. Um, they actually refer to the creature as a xenomorph. It's never been referred to as a xenomorph before. Well, in the alien, in aliens, Gorman brings up xenomorph, and like, okay. we, well, we talked about it in that commentary, but it, it's z they call it xenomorph, but Gorman's basically trying to sound like he knows what he's talking about, even though he doesn't. Like xenomorph is a very general biological term that doesn't okay. it like like I was saying in that commentary if you recall it's like if you've never seen a rabbit before and you didn't know what it was you could call it a xenomorph okay um but in this specifically this version of Alien Three um 
it's specifically called a xenomorph. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, and then they That's just strange. and they and they just did a they just did something wrong. They asked the, the company permission to terminate it, and the, per, the company uh, denied permission. And I'm like, well, why did you tell them it was here? It's like ask forgiveness, not permission. For Christ's sake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why did they do that? They just let them know that the alien was here. Hey guys, heads up. So they were just like, "Hey, can we kill it?" It's like, "No, of course you can't kill it." Yeah, oh, oh, Jesus Christ! I forgot about that. Whoa. Yeah. Gallic is a naughty boy. So, uh, Gallic has this. Uh, connection to the alien he feels like it spared him so it's like he's gonna let it go tell me what to do next so we're watching the subtitles and we're seeing vocalizing continues and I'm like where's the vocalizing come from This is kind of a spooky scene. Yeah. Cause you know it's in there. Alien's always in there. Yeah. Uh oh. Oops. Got him. Uh, oh. <laughs> There's the <laughs> Now it's loose again. They don't want to kill it. Yeah, why did you tell them? I I why did I don't know. I, I don't know either. Some sort of weapon. It's gross. That is not COVID safe, Charles S. Dutton. <laughs> now, this is an interesting thing that Ripley is bringing up here. Like, they want to turn it into a bioweapon, and Dutton saying, yeah, what does that have to do with us? You know, it's like, why should we care? And it's like, they're going to do bad things regardless of what we do and, and i think that is an interesting philosophical point to bring to the series because it, it's a challenge to ripley it's just not done very well oh there's some prison cells it's about goddamn time we saw some prison cells in this goddamn prison We got a problem. The alien. The alien got. Couldn't you just say the alien got out? <laughs> it was like, we have to go down and investigate. Oh no. Well, what are we going to do now? Andrews was right. The the whole thing with Gallic could have been a lot better too, I think. Like so you have we do have a little bit you can see a little bit in the performance of Charles S. Dutton. It's like there is some regret there because he advocated for Gallic. But again, it's just not written into the plot in any meaningful way. And it could have been more interesting if if it was. Like, like all of a sudden now there's like a challenge to his, any kind of authority that he, you know, ha, ha, or, or good faith that he's built up is now questionable. Mm -hmm. And that could, you know, there could have been, some, there's some really awesome potential for, for drama in this movie and it's just really messy bad drama i think we got like 40 minutes left i gotta think of some oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah this is uh yeah at least it's gonna get good at some point in there yeah no the third act that's when stuff happens like 
stuff isn't there's nothing happening right now that we don't already know and right it's not having any consequence on or any bearing on the story it's not until she discovers she's got the queen which is pretty soon here yeah i think it's this scene yeah this is when stuff starts happening this, okay the, like this is this is when the actual like story of alien it's a okay cool all right now we've got a real like predicament here and and now all of a sudden our choices matter. What if you just condense the rest of the movie into five minutes and put it at the <laughs> beginning of this? Just make this into a short film. Yeah, turn it into like a forty minute long. I, I gotta think about it. I I might I might see about trying to do a fan edit of this movie and see if I can do anything to try and solve some of these problems. I, I one thing I do like about the assembly cut is there's a little bit more depth to given to this eighty five character and you know he kind of goes he he actually kind of has a journey in this movie which is interesting because he goes from being kind of the right hand man like he, the stupid right hand grunt of the of the superintendent to trying to be more understanding and more humane and. You know, right now he's helping Ripley, and at the end he's actually going to uh, kind of give his life to help her. Remember in the making of documentary, they were talking about the footage on that screen. Yeah, it's uh, it's, a, it's actually a practical effect. Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah, but they said they they did all this different stuff, and they only ended up using like a fraction of it. Yeah, you know. Oh, you know, it's un it's so sad. Like, there's actually a lot of visual effects stuff in this that's interesting, and it's. It's like they spend a lot of money. Like we occasionally cut to those shots of the uh, of the furnaces, and it's like it's a beautiful shot that they spent a lot of money on, and it doesn't, you know, doesn't really do. It really, it's only in the film for like a fraction of a second, not mm -hmm. a fraction of a second, just not very long. Um, but this is the point where we learn that. She's got uh, an alien inside of her. And again, the, how this a actually happened is a little bit confusing. And also it was hinted at in the it was hinted at in the opening credits a little bit, but it, it's it's very disjointed. I, I don't know if that was really for do you think that the opening credits foreshadowed this at all? kind of yeah. yeah, a little bit but it doesn't it doesn't really lead you on which is, i guess is a good thing but yeah. it might have been better might have been better knowing that something like this was possible i don't know but the idea that ripley has a queen inside of her that she is she is soon to be the mother, uh, in, in a way, to this this horrible creature she's been struggling against is a really great concept for the third Alien movie. And I think if that was more of this movie, it would have probably been... If that, if that was more the focus of this movie, I think this might have been a lot better. Instead of it get kind of this Batman versus Superman thing where it's like the movie is about everything except for the fight between Batman and Superman. <laughs> you get a lot of miscellaneous character development that is absolutely and utterly meaningless. Yeah. Until the rescue team gets here, we're fucked. <sighs> yeah, it's too much of the same beats from the originals. Yeah, the first two movies. It, it, no. uh, there's a, they're trying to make callbacks, and then, but they don't mean anything, and. There's too much of the same damn thing happening. Like, again, the, nothing really changes fundamentally in this movie. Until we get to Act 3, and then... 
Well, I mean, even then, I mean, they were still kind of listening to Ripley and trying to fight beforehand, but there's a little bit more weight to it once we get to that speech. Because it, because all of a sudden there's like a there's something at stake all of a sudden because it's like they realize that the company is coming to get the alien and they have to be convinced well why does that affect us and you know being told that you you know you're all going to die you know and the least you can do is you know fight for the greater good is is pretty it's pretty powerful stuff. And it's unfortunately, it's unfortunate that the movie takes so fucking long to get there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm being, we're both being extreme. We're, we're dragging on this movie quite a bit. Like, there, there are, there, there are stuff. Like, if you're of the perspective that. Um, you know, if you enjoyed this film, um, there, there are some interesting little beats here and there. Like right now we have like Ripley in 85 arguing about, um, the company's intentions. And it's like, well, they'll come here and kill it. And Ripley's trying to say, well, no, they're not going to. And he's like, well, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Maybe if, if they're coming here to get it, maybe they can get us off of the planet. And, you know, there's some, there's some interesting drama that can be extrapolated there. Like, I'm not saying that there aren't like good scenes. Like we've been saying there's some good individual moments in this movie. Again, it's just, we're talking about just in general, like, the overall movie, this is not fun to watch. <laughs> this is really just unentertaining. And, and like, like here, here, here's the thing. Here, here's a really good example here. Ripley is talking about, like, going to go confront this thing. It's not going to kill her, so I'm going to confront it. And there's, like, there's, like, this very personal psychological thing going on here with her it's like but that needs to be happening at a at a different point in the script like when there's a feeling of hopelessness like it like after the uh the midpoint is there can come a point in a script that we call the pit of despair and that can be where ripley goes to confront the monster and it's like this personal i need to I need to, uh, to, um, you know, confront, I need to confront the thing and I need to see it and I, I need to try and understand, I need to get something out of this, you know, but it just doesn't feel like that that's what happens. Right. In the Vincent Ward script, this part of the movie was actually really weird. Was there an entire script for the Vincent Ward oh, yeah. version? Oh, okay. yeah. He wrote, he wrote the whole script, and it's online. Have you, have you read it? I read it. What do you think? It's weird. Yeah. But I think it's more coherent than this movie. Okay. But this version of it was... um th this in, in, this in, in the Vincent Ward script, this scene was really weird. It, it was more like the alien was more taunting Ripley... Um, which is kind of part of that that I like and part of it that I don't like because you, you risk making the alien too too human or too anthropomorphic at least but I, I, I did like it in the context of that script because of all the spiritual and religious um, you know imagery and themes um But, again, like, in terms of the story, it's like, what's happening right now is, does it make sense for Ripley to be trying to find the alien and have kind of this little, uh, this little moment of introspection with it? Like, does that make sense here at all? Not really. 
What do you think? Mm. See, the the movie started to work for me by this point, so I'm I'm not. Yeah, I don't have a problem with this no. kind of moment, especially yeah, with the stuff that that just happened. You know, with yeah. her finding out yeah that she's got one inside her. Yeah, it I'm, makes sense. Yeah, no, I can see that. It's kind of like I need to reckon. Yeah, I I need to reckon with the fact that I'm a, about to birth one of these things. Yeah, and right. and become the mother of, of them. Um, so I guess I can see it. It's just. Again, I, I I don't know if it's at the right point in the story. Right. Uh, like like it. It should have happened. In what point. what I'm saying is, I I feel like this should happen at a point when it feels like she doesn't have any control and there's no other hope. And then this is how she kind of finds yeah. that strength again. I like this scene. Oh yeah, this is good. But you kind of get what I mean. Yeah. Like, it feels like she could be doing something more important right now. Yeah. Uh, but this is, but this is, a. I like this moment here. This is pretty good. Just do what you do. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. Uh, it it kind of looks like a Giger painting a little bit with all the pipes yeah. and wires. That's kind of neat. Yeah. I dig it. Uh oh, there it is in the background. I see it. Ah! Hey, hey, what's going on, baby? That's a, that's a good prop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the costume looks fine. It's just the, the weird compositing shots are. The stuff that's question. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> Roll credits. <laughs> so she's talking about again. I have one inside of me. Big one won't kill its own. She. This was. Uh, I think she already said this earlier. And also, here's another question: How long has she actually been here? Because it. it how how long has the alien been gestating inside of her? The queen needs longer to gestate. Sure, I can buy that, but I don't know. It's a little bit weird. It's 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 always kind of been a question in all the alien movies. Wait a minute, exactly how long did these things take? Because in the first one, it was less than it. it I think it was less than twenty four hours. Yeah. When it emerged, and then when it turned into the adult, and then in this, it seems like like she's been in in here for at least. Uh, a little while now. It's got to be at least like a three or four days. Yeah, this yeah. I, I more than a day, less than a week. So mm -hmm. so, but no, I buy it because it's the queen. No, I it I, takes longer to gestate. I I can buy that, but I don't know. It's also weird. Like again, there's a lot of questions surrounding this part of the alien life cycle. Like, how does the queen get implanted and? Other sources have suggested that that's not even a thing. Like, it's just if there's no queen, eventually one of the drones will molt and become a queen. Huh. Um, it's not... There's nothing, like, hard canon that explains how that happens. And Alien 3 kind of muddies it. I guess we have to accept that the alien queen does get implanted somehow, but, like... Exactly how that occurs, or uh, I, is unknown. So, this is an interesting scene of Ripley's basically asking uh, to be put out of her misery, and um, understandable, I guess. Yeah, but then the ending of this scene is like, what? Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of lame. Yeah, it's kind of like, what a pussy tease. <laughs> no pairs. Charleston. Um, okay. Um, just gonna do a smacker in the back of the head, I guess. Or... Oh, oh, he's gonna hit her with the axe. Yeah. Yeah, just do it. 
this is what I'm saying. It's just like, what a tease. <laughs> it wasn't even like a good build-up yeah. either. Yeah. It was like a, it was an okay build-up. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I mean, there's something of a question mark, like, is he gonna do it or not? But then it's just like, you motherfucker, like, why'd you do that and not, you know, follow through? Fuck you. Everybody's really angry. Everybody's really angry and mean in this movie. He's supposed to be like a religious guy, right? Everybody's also a uh, YY. That's true. I keep forgetting that. So wait a minute. Is that... Is the double Y thing... Is that... um? Does that absolve them of any of the bad things they do? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't feel like it does. Um, so this is the part I keep talking about that this is the turning point for me on this movie. This is the first scene where I'm like, okay, this is good. I like this. Yeah, Cause they're, they're, they're trying to kind of, we're, we're kind of finally getting all the cards laid on the table here a little bit. And it's it's finally the point where it feels like something is actually going to happen and we're actually going to... Now, why is that guy sitting like that? Wh wh which one? Him. Oh, 85? I... He looks very uncomfortable. Well, you know, when you've lived in an uncomfortable environment. Right, but he's got, like, he's got better seats all around him. Staging. I don't and know. having one foot over, one foot behind. Well, he's also eighty-five because fence. he's also eighty-five. They call him eighty-five. You just said it because he's because he's dumb. He's gonna fall on his nuts. It's possible. I, the thing I like about this scene is it, it's, it's, I, again, I feel like it's the first point where there's like a reckoning here a little bit where they're talking about, um, you know, exactly what it is they're going to do and why they should do it. It's like, why should we, you know, go on a suicide run, you know, and help you kill this thing? And it's because you know, Ripley's saying here, the company is not going to help you. You know, they, you know, it, it's like they, they killed off their crew. Uh, you know, they sacrificed a bunch of Marines. Why would they care about the likes of you? And it become, it, it's the point where there's, again, a philosophical weight that gets cast over the movie. And it's like, yeah, we're going to die because it's the last good thing that we can possibly do mm -hmm. to to find redemption for ourselves. And I think that's, I think it's really beautiful because this movie is so dark and unnecessarily <laughs> gross and depressing that finally getting to see the a little bit of like, a little bit of a light at the end of a tunnel or some kind of hope in a way, in, in, uh, hope in a completely hopeless situation is refreshing. Like, I feel like I can kind of breathe a little bit now. Um, because it, it's like, we're no longer talking about like, you know, it, 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 are we going to die? We're no longer talking about, like, you know, where is the alien? It's now about, like, we're actually going to try and outwit this thing and, and kill it. And we might die. And, you know, it's possible. It, you know, but we'll, you know, we'll find some absolution. In other words, it's the first time something's actually fucking happening that's meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Now we're getting into Act 3. Cool. Like, 
like the characters are putting their ass on the line now and it's like now I'm in it only took me two hours to get here <laughs> Justin is shaking his head right now he's not having a good time <laughs> uh, uh, um, I like uh, all this stuff at the end when they're chasing the alien, or the alien's chasing them, rather, and they're trying to lure it into this, uh, into the lead works. Uh, some cool POV shots that we'll talk about. But I do think the one problem that we can say, and, you know, we brought it up before, is it's not terribly scary. It's kind of cool. It's kind of artistic, but it's not very scary. Mm -hmm. There's not enough action for it to be a good action movie. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's like a weird... It's like a weird failed art movie. <laughs> it's kind of my best description of it. They're just pure sci-fi. But it's not even really pure sci-fi. Right, because there's no real. Yeah, it's it's there's not much of a premise to it. Yeah, it's it's. I I mean the production of the movie speaks for itself. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know what they wanted. Yeah. They didn't know what they wanted to do. And it shows. Yeah, it it absolutely shows, and that's kind of where again I I bring in the question like what did David Fincher actually want to do? It doesn't seem. Like, he had any other vision other than to try and make a movie. Like, that he thought... Like, like there's a cynical ploy there to try and... I want to get into Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, it's just like, I, I don't know. Isn't that chain around his neck kind of uncomfortable? Looks pretty heavy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think we better rethink this thing. Um, and here's an interesting bit, like, it's not, like, what is the alien actually doing right now? I like this shot. Yeah, I like these, I love these, I love these POV shots, the fish eye, yeah. fish eye lens. Um, much better than Alien Covenant, where we actually, like, supposed to literally see what the alien's seeing, and it's just, like, really lame. This is better because it's, like, it's not indicative of anything more than a warped perspective, and, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's much better in my view. I, I, I think it's pretty cool. Kind of, kind of like a Stanley Kubrick in a way. Yeah, it's a lot like the shots of the maze in The Shining. Yeah, kinda. Kinda dig that. Uh oh. Oh no. I think I found Vincent. There's a lot of. Do you think this movie. Like, let's say nothing else about this movie changed and they just had a little bit more comedy in it. It would be a much better movie. Yeah. That's one of the shots I kind of liked, the composited alien. I thought that was... Because it's pretty fast. You don't get a time to see some of the imperfections. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I'm going to get him. You get in here, you. <laughs> Where's the where the fuck is the E? Troy. Charles S. Dutton is ready to murder people. What I'm surprised there hasn't been a scene where he accidentally just kills somebody. Right. For improvising. Right. Okay, the company's on their way. 
They're really close. Yeah. But they did say they were like two hours away. Which gave them the entire movie's length to get here, so. <laughs> here, kitty, kitty, kitty. That's, that's a callback to the first yeah. movie. Yeah, holy shit. That's pretty funny. Hey, you bastard. It's like crappy, like, Sega Genesis alien. <laughs> Look at that. That looks, that looks so bad. Yeah. <sighs> I won't argue with that. <laughs> Nominated for the Oscar for visual effects. Really? Yeah, uh, talking to earlier. Lost to Terminator 2. Understandably. Yes. I think it was nominated just because of, like, the other movies were nominated and won. And, and won. So they felt like this one had to get nominated, too, but... The other two both won? Alien and Aliens, yeah, both yeah. won visual effects, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, we talked about it. Okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so I kind of feel like with this one, they felt the same way. Like, oh, I guess we gotta give this one a nod, but... The effects are clearly pretty lackluster. This was also before CGI really was a thing, so yeah. I mean, there there is the one CGI shot which we'll talk about, but okay. Where the hell is it? That's the. That's always uh, that's always a question. Is or is where the hell is it? Oh, I like that. This. this is a cool yeah, shot. It's gonna yeah, be like, real sneaky. Yeah, it's building some tension. I like it. I dig it. The, like stuff like that's like there's like really great individual shots here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, a little sneaky son of a bitch. Uh, uh, uh oh. Oh shit. It, it, uh, here's Johnny. Right through the face. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, wait till you see Alien Resurrection. A lot of a lot of face shots. Oh, there's a lot of really gross, violent shit that happens in that movie. Okay. It's like, this is the indication, like, the fact that we're even reacting to some of this stuff is like, this, where before it's just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. I mean, this is, again, this is the point where the movie actually starts to do stuff that means. That looks good. Yeah, this is, the, I like the stuff with the, I like the stuff with the company coming in because they're almost like these angels of death in a way kind of coming in and they could almost be mistaken uh for uh you know a force for good he's gonna go oh no hand-to-hand -hand combat with the alien <laughs> dropped his axe i don't need no axe oh. but is the alien moving slow at this point doesn't want to get too close to Charles S. Dutton. Yeah. Fuck his shit up. Oh no. It's alright. It's alright? I don't think it's alright. I think he's. Guys, I think he's dead. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, there it is. Whoops. Pull it. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Missed it. And so they're, uh. So, wait, wait a minute. So the plan was they wanted to get it in there and then they were going to trap it in there, right? Yeah. Okay, because I was going to say, it's like they have five, it's going to have five whole minutes to find a way out. And I think we see later the, the the top of that 
whole area is kind of exposed, so it could theoretically just crawl out in five minutes. Or I don't I don't know. I'm not I'm not an engineer. I don't know how lead works work. <laughs> One thing we haven't talked about, and we haven't really talked about them too much in any of these commentaries because we watch these with the sound off and the subtitles is a uh, score and the sound work. Um, oh, oh, that's pretty gnarly. Um, the, the music and the sound have an interesting kind of interplay in this. And I think there was like some trading back and forth between the sound team and Elliot Goldenthal about when the sound should take precedence, precedence and when the music should take precedence. Because Elliot Goldenthal does use a lot of, like... Uh, sounds. Like, actual sounds to make the music. Right. So they had to make sure they didn't conflict. I like how the company is kind of just being presented as this... Like, inhuman... They're almost, like, alien in and of themselves. They're, they're inhuman. They're distant. Yeah. Like and like I say here, they're even like arguably in angelic. Uh, they got the same kind of outfits as the uh, government and um, ET. Oh yeah, they do. I I, I kind of like that because yeah. they're they're not. I like that they are not personified. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's really cool and interesting and spooky. Oh, oh they're cracking jokes. Now there's now they're making jokes. But, but this is what happens when you put comedic relief in your movie. Don't do it, kids. Also, get your vaccines. <laughs> I wish they would have done more with the fact that, like Ripley, using the fact that she that the alien won't kill her to her advantage. Like, that could have been more of the story, really. There could have been a whole story about that. Yeah, I like that detail. Yeah. And I think they, they, use it, they use it in a couple scenes, but they could have done it more. Yeah, I again, I feel like it's like Batman vs. Superman, where it's like only 10% of the movie is about Batman fighting Superman. And this probably does that a little bit better. It's probably not a perfect comparison, but... I, 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 I'm what I'm saying is this could have that could have been the plot of the whole movie, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. It's like because it, it kind of forces her into a position where to confront it and where she can confront it on a on a psychological level where previously that was not possible. Mm hmm. Scream. That's like... Oh, see, this is the shot I really like. That's a cool shot. Mm -hmm. It's only like two seconds, unfortunately. But that's actually our I shot. I think that was the right move, making it only two seconds. Well, I feel like whatever it is, the combination of lighting and fog, that was like the first time I felt like the rod, pu rod puppet was actually there in the frame. Okay. I like that shot. Fucking sue me. <laughs> Morris, you son of a bitch. Shut the fucking door. That looked alright. That then, but the one before. The did. first half of it, yeah. Yeah. I like how they're... You can't, can't tell it's Lance Henriksen because he's got the glasses and his face is covered and he's also not in focus uh, in the shot. But, yeah. So... Yeah, there's a lot of timing things going on. There's getting the position in place, uh, the piston in place, getting the alien in, in the right position, and then the company is on the way, and it's a lot of moving gears that actually kind of lend some tension yeah. to this whole third act that wasn't there in the rest of the whole movie. I like that color, too. Yeah. The, what do you think, like, what do you think of the color grading in this movie? It's, it's very... I think it looks good. Yeah, I, I, I I agree. It's we keep uh, something I keep bringing up is like all the alien movies have a unique feel to them. Yeah. And there's 
This one's, you know, this one carves its own. Yeah, plays. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's cool. Pour the lead. Okay, yeah, this is the Rocky Six. He's gonna fight the alien. Mono e mono. <laughs> We have to listen to him just get ripped apart. I just want to hug. Again, motherfucker? I, just, I just give me a kiss. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. Maybe. I, I don't know. The alien can tolerate some pretty extreme conditions, as we've seen. It's true. It lived in. It was. It survived in the vacuum of space. That's true. The molten lead. I don't want to hit the moon. Okay. Yay! It's done. This is some actual uh, footage from Flint, Michigan. <laughs> They did it. We did it, boys. It's just all... a river full of lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only Flint, Michigan fan, uh, uh, fans would understand. Oh, shit. There it is. Ah. <laughs> Why? Why did you do this to me? Mommy, why did you do this to me? Why? Tell me why, Mommy. Why don't you love me? <laughs> I don't know if that's a rod puppet or not, but that looked pretty good. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it must be the suit. It looks too good. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so coming up is the one and only computer-generated shot in the whole damn movie. Um... You're right there. That's the only thing. Really? Why? Why? I don't know. That could have been built very easily. Yeah, and also I don't know why. Um, just because it was molten, and it gets doused in water, that makes it explode. That's a good. That's a good point. <laughs> I don't know what the physiology is there. Somebody who's a scientist needs to. Maybe the lead expands quickly. Yeah, I can see that. I'll, I'll buy it. It's just, I don't know. It just, I, 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 I buy it. It's just kind of weird to me. Like from a biochemical perspective. Right. Like, what does that say about the, yeah, I don't know. Also, um, uh, they needed to reshoot some stuff for this scene and, uh, Ripley, uh, or Sigourney Weaver didn't, uh, want to shave her head again. And so some very creative people in the makeup and hair department came up with, uh, a very, uh, very, um, realistic bald cap for her uh -huh. that cost $30,000 instead of, uh, 30, what the fuck? instead of $30 million that would have been for Sigourney Weaver's fee. Oh, wow. Yeah. So save some money there. Yeah. $30,000 bald, ca bald cap. Well, it needed to replicate all the little hairs. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just a bald cap. So I like, again, I love this here. It's like, the, there's something about the company that's like, like they're other and they're bringing in this familiar. There's something kind of dreamlike about this. Yeah, it, yeah. And it's really beautiful it, anyway, because they're bringing in like a friendly face and it's like, you know, she they know that she knows Bishop and it's, yeah, it's really spooky and dreamlike, like you said. And it's it, it's really great how they they do present like a really good choice here for Ripley because it's like 
hey, listen, come with us. We have a team prepped on the ship. We'll take it out of you, and we can, we'll, we'll take it to, you, you know, you can have that life that you've always wanted. And it's like, kind of like what Charles S. Dutton was saying earlier, um, it's like, why does it matter to us if they want to make bioweapons? It's like, hey, you can just forget all about that and have, you know, the life that you wanted. It's a really, really powerful scene. She's going to make the choice, of course, that she can't live with that on her conscience. And she's going to, if she can't escape this thing, you know, she's going to take it with her to the grave. And they're never going to have it. And, of course, there's the saying here, you know, you'll know it's there and they're going to kill it. But there's only, the way I interpreted the scene, there's almost this, like, we both know the real truth, but yeah. but here's what you can live with in your head. You know, no, you'll know it's dead, and you don't have to think about it. Yeah, I I think this is a great way of kind of showing the company without needing to, without humanizing them. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think this is all beautiful stuff. Oh. Yikes. That was a gruesome you know, shooting his kneecap. Uh -huh. yeah. Now 85 gets his big moment here. Yeah, this is all great because it's like they're all like th up to this point they've all like reasoned they're all going to die. Uh -huh. And so now this is just them like, just kind of living up to that. It's like trying to help Ripley get to that point where she can, you know, throw herself into the uh, the boiler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is great. This is like... I can't... I don't know if there's any other movies that come to mind right away where it's like, it was so terrible to watch, and then it just has a great, like, final ten minutes. Yeah. It's weird. Like, probably the closest would be, like, something like that Four Rooms movie from the 90s. Yeah. Where it's just, like, the first two skits are just god-awful, and then the third one is much better, and then the fourth one is just amazing. Yeah. And then you're like, wow, that was a weird journey. Now, this is also something that's uh, different from the theatrical cut. I I and a lot of other people did not like the queen bursting out of her as she falls into the boiler. Um, and they don't do that here. And I think it's nicer. Okay. Yeah. I'll see. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. And I and I love the, 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 the reaction here. Just like the... You know, them realizing their opportunity is lost. They didn't want to do it this way in 92 because they were worried about people comparing it to Terminator 2. Because which also has uh, a scene with uh, Schwarzenegger, obviously, going into a boiler. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, it's really, it's a great finale, I feel like, for Ripley and, and, and that, you know, the company kind of walking out of here empty-handed and the realization that they lost, you know, and, and Ripley won. And I, I do think it's a great ending for, for that character. Um, until Alien Resurrection. <laughs> um, it's kind of neat that they're ending it with the uh, message that she left at the end of the first movie. I don't... I don't know if it adds much. I don't know if it's necessary. I, I don't think it's necessary, but... If it was a send-off, I guess maybe it's, it's fine. I don't know. Um, yeah. 
I wish the uh, I like the yeah. last screen there. Yeah, I like this too. I, the whole finale of the movie is tight. Mm -hmm. it, it, the whole finale is is it it's tight, and I'm like the the rest of the film just meanders. It's just like God damn it. The whole movie was was that you know, tightly edited and just honed in on the necessary things. Probably be a lot more entertaining, which mm -hmm. is why I, I, you know, Justin thinks, and I'm kind of, I, I didn't used to think this until I revisited the movie, but I actually kind of think the theatrical cuts probably the better cut of this movie because it's just faster. Yeah. Uh, and it gets to the point. Uh, in a way that this one doesn't 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 hang out where it doesn't need to for too long. Yeah, um, this was honestly kind of painful to watch. Yeah. Until we get to Act Three, and then it starts to get better, and then the finale is great. Um, mm -hmm. man, this uh, yeah, I I I I'll have to see what I feel about oh, Alien Resurrection or revisiting it again after so long, but I, I from what I remember, I, I I really do think it's superior to Alien 3. It's just, it's just, maybe the, uh, in terms of like the outcome, Alien th Resurrection is, like, you could make an argument, like, like, Alien and Aliens are two of the greatest movies ever made. And Alien Resurrection is just like, well, this is just like a schlocky American action movie. But it's a competently made schlocky American action movie that, you know, for better or worse, it accomplishes what it's trying to do, mm -hmm. whether you agree with it creatively or not. And this movie just, I, I, I feel like my description of Alien 3 is it's a failed art movie. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. That that's how I feel about it. Would, would you? What do you? Would you say so, Justin? Um, I just say it's a failed movie. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so far as to call it an art movie, because it's it was clearly made with commerce in mind. You think so? <laughs> Rather than art. Oh yeah. I I because it was it was made because the studio needed a movie. I think if they had stuck with Vincent Ward, I would have called it an art movie. Yeah, but I think the switch to Fincher. I think Fincher just wanted a movie done. He didn't. He just he wanted something to get him into Hollywood. And he wanted yeah he wanted to have something that looked good on his resume. Yeah, and then yeah. he and then he as soon as he, you know, Seven ended up being his true break into Hollywood. And as soon as he had like a couple movies under his belt, he uh, basically just disowned Alien Three. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if this movie. I I think this movie did well at the box office. The obvious, it obviously did well enough that uh, they made, the, they made they, they made a fourth one, and after committing to the decision to kill Ripley, they said, "Well, you got to bring Ripley back." So that's cool. Oh, VFX and sixty-five millimeter. Oh, huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is one of the last like movies before the digital revolution. Like, like I mean, a year after this, we got Jurassic Park. Yeah. So the, the, they were still doing a lot of old school like chemical stuff like blue screen is yeah. you know dissolving the color blue specifically and you know nowadays it's with digital it's it's green screen because you know it's a different process. Um but yeah, it, it's uh uh, the reason I kind of called it an art movie was because that's me kind of trying to give some credence a little bit to it. Like, I, I, like to the sense in, in the sense of like, if you're a fan of this movie because you like its artistic qualities, I, I can see, okay. I, I just like, like we keep talking about there's great individual shots and there's great individual moments and, there is a, you know, there's an artistry there on display that I. But it's better in the other. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> it's better no. in the first two. Yeah, uh, no, no, I'm not saying I'm not arguing against everything. That. This movie does well. The first two do even better. I I agree a hundred percent. I'm just I I I'm just saying that I can understand looking at it from that perspective. Yeah. But no, the other movies were the first two movies. 
uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. We talked a lot about it, and we're reaching the end of the credits. Uh, I pretty much said everything I needed to say a hundred times. Hopefully, you're still listening by this point, and you haven't uh, checked out. Uh, but if you uh, if you have, uh, if you're still with us, uh, thank you for listening to our commentary. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, please uh, like and subscribe to Studio Utani if you haven't. We're going to continue to cover more stuff involving Alien. And uh, yeah, this was this was Alien Cubed. Any final thoughts? Nope. Everybody have a good one. Yep. See ya.